All right, we're going to do one more here. Let's go to auxiliary grounding electrodes. Now, before I get into this, an auxiliary grounding electrode <laughs> is when somebody drives a ground rod and they connect it to the electrical equipment grounding conductor. So in other words, you already have an equipment grounding conductor, and then you add a, a ground rod to the equipment grounding conductor because you think that, you know, I think this is just going to make it better. Well, it doesn't really matter why you do it, but if you add a ground rod that's not required, it's called an auxiliary grounding electrode. It used to be called a supplemental electrode, and then they kind of decided, decide, well, let's, that supplemental is a little too close <coughs> to supplementary electrode. Maybe there was a supplementary electrode or whatever it is. So they call it now an auxiliary. They've called it for the last few code cycles an auxiliary, meaning kind of like it's extra if you want to do that. So now what's interesting, the code says, look, if you drive a ground <coughs> rod and you connect it to the equipment grounding conductor, and the ground rod or the electrode that you install is not part of the of the requirement of grounding electrodes. Remember when we said the grounding electrodes, if they were present, you had to bond them together? Well, it doesn't matter whether it's present or not, because if it's not for the purposes of the building electrode, then you don't have to bond them together. In other words, if you drive a ground rod out at a generator that's not required to be connected or a, or some a pole lighting and it's not required, 250.54 says you are not required to comply with 250.50. You don't have to bond that, sub, the, that auxiliary electrode to the building grounding electrode system. It also says that we don't care what the resistance is. The fact that you drove a single ground rod might be more than 25 ohms. And since this is a ground rod that is connected to the equipment grounding conductor and it's not required, you, we, you don't have to drive another ground rod for something that's not required. It's, it's, it's an auxiliary electrode. And it also tells you the size of the wire. It, we don't care what size wire you want to run from the equipment grounding conductor to a ground rod that's not required by the code. And so this is a rule that tells you you don't need to bond them. It doesn't have to have any given amount of resistance, and it doesn't matter what size wire that you run to that because this is an electrode that is an auxiliary electrode connected to the equipment grounding conductor. It's not right required by the code, and this is a code rule telling you that you don't have to comply with these things because sometimes inspectors thought that a guy would drive a ground rod for some reason, that the ground rod should comply with the exact same grounding requirements as a grounding electrode that was required. A grounding electrode required has to comply with the code. A grounding electrode that's not required and it's auxiliary does not have to comply with the code. Scott, are we good with that there? Yeah, the, the only comment is it does have to be connected to the equipment grounding terminal. Well, for it to be considered an auxiliary grounding right. electrode. Yeah. yeah. So right here, because this wire is connected to the equipment grounding you terminal. Want to go to your big slide. Oh, I'm sorry. Because this wire is connected to the equipment grounding terminal, okay, then this is called an auxiliary grounding electrode. It doesn't serve any purpose at all. But people like to put ground rods at poles because it's been doing it for 100 years and they think it's supposed to be and, you know, whatever the case may be. Now, here's another example of a generator, a ground rod connected to a generator. Again, this is an auxiliary electrode. It's not required by the code. There is no minimum resistance or no maximum resistance. There's minimum, no minimum conductor size. And this electrode, which is the auxiliary electrode, is not required to be connected to the building grounding electrode system. Scott. Just one thing there. It's not required if the generator is not separately derived. Okay, If yes. the generator right. is separately derived, then you do need an electrode. does not necessarily have to be a ground rod, but that's probably the most common one. Yeah, I probably should put in here, maybe in here, a non-separately derived system would be a good idea to add this to the graphic. Auxiliary electrode for a non-separately derived system, because it's an auxiliary <laughs> electrode connected right. to the equipment grounding conductor. Okay? And not only that, but you really would not want to put a ground rod at this location here, and then have an electrode here because electrons are gonna travel up and over. Brian, let's show that video again. I'd like that one video where it's hitting the tree outside the building. And Jacob, <laughs> imagine that there's a generator near that building, and there's a ground rod, an auxiliary electrode at the generator, then there's a ground rod over here. I'm looking to see if I can see a generator. Yeah. I don't see one. Yeah. But if there was, you can be assured that that earth and because the earth has a voltage gradient, that charge probably would be going through this equipment over here. 
if that lightning struck right there, like that, like that video showed, that lightning strikes right over there. Let's say I had a generator on the other side of that building somewhere. And you have that kind of energy traveling up and over inside here. We can't predict what might happen to the electronics. Well, and, and that generator is installed according to the manufacturer's instructions. Uh, I actually double-checked our research department because I couldn't believe that they put that back in there, but they did. So there are manufacturer <laughs> generators that are actually saying, we want you to actually connect our generator to the earth, even though it's not a separate drive system, and it's not required to be a made a connection. They actually went as far to say that the NEC requires it. No way. Mm -hmm. They did. Mm -hmm. You might want to let them know that they're wrong in their instructions and that they're causing themselves a huge amount of problems in the sense that, number one, they're saying something that's false. The National Code does not require generators that are not separately drive to be grounded. It is not a good practice, but it's not illegal, right, because... They want to have them connected to the... I mean, technically, they're right. If they wrote it in their instruction manual, the NEC does require it to be installed. Because... <laughs> so, it's a little bit of a circular uh, argument. A little bit there, of a circular the, argument, Because you know. 110 3B says you have to comply with the manufacturer's instructions. Yeah. And if we say the NEC requires it, well, it does in 110 3B. So since we says you have to, you go into that, to that yeah. loop that... Yeah, circular logic. That's there, a good point. Sure. Ah, that's a good point. You know, that's not a very smart thing to do. And maybe somebody else got in there and they really think that's a good idea, but it's not. All right. So CNC machines, so some machine tools. A lot of times they have instructions that they want to have ground rods. Well, that's the same problem as a generator having instructions inside there. You know, you, you put yourself at risk to have electronics wiped out. Jacob. What is that machine? Oh, great thing. It's called CNC. Brian, you want to tell us a little bit about CNC machines? Yeah, CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control, I think. Yeah. And basically, it's a machine that's got a computer, and you use CAD and some translation software, and you make a drawing, and it actually uses the coordinates on the drawing to do the work for you instead of a machinist standing there or a woodworker standing there and physically running the machine. The machine just follows a three uh, three axis map to do the work. It just cuts things out or mills things or whatever it happens to be. It, it, so it's it's for really precise. So so I have a I have a friend of mine that has a uh, a shop that does work with metal, um, sophisticated sheet metal. One side of the shop would be more for commercial type applications. He has people make all the cuts, drill all the holes. The other side of the shop does work for only the aircraft industry. And the aircraft industry the holes, the spacing, everything is so precise for airplanes that no person can be precise enough. So they actually have to use computer machines in order to make the holes with the proper spacing. To make. So, so it's like really, really, really sophisticated. It's computers, electronics, and then these guys take this million dollar piece of equipment and they stick it to the earth because somebody told them you're supposed to connect to the earth and that helps get a zero reference. And of course, there's no such thing as that. Then you run an equipment grounding conductor and lightning strikes, and then, you know, we, they have a problem. With well, that. and CNC equipment has actually gotten very, very cost effective. It's not uh, an outlying technology anymore. You can buy for a few hundred dollars CNC equipment to have in your garage to do stuff, smaller stuff. So it's changed. The industry's changed a lot. All right, let's run through these real quick here. The earth isn't permitted to serve as a required effective ground fault current path, so therefore you have to have an equipment grounding conductor in there. People drive ground rods, which is fine, which is an auxiliary electrode. If you don't have an effective ground fault current path there, and there's a fault, I think we've covered this before a few times, right? Well, then you're not going to be able to clear that fault, and that's where you're going to have a hazard. Here are people driving ground rods because they think grounding a pole is going to be of some value. Here's the National Code saying that one or more connected shall not be required to comply with what I said. You don't have to comply with the bonding, don't have to comply with the resistance, don't have to comply with the sizing. Jacob, you follow the logic there? So the code's telling you you don't have to comply with that. And then here's an example showing a picture of a, a ground rod to a, a CNC machine. So I guess if you want to have a ground rod and you want to put cable ties to a, ground, to a, to a wire, because it's not a grounding electroconductor, because it's just the wire, 
As long as it's auxiliary, it's okay. As long as it's an auxiliary electric, you can run Cat5 to it. I was going to say, the only one I like better than this was the piece of CPVC pipe driven in the ground with the auxiliary <laughs> electroconductor attached with zip ties. That's the best one. You I saw could, that? I, I have the picture. I just couldn't find it because I wanted to put it in here. It's a piece of CPVC driven in the ground with the electroconductor going to it. And I was like, that's the first guy I have ever seen in my life. Matter of fact, if I was doing Generac generators. There you go. That's what I would install. Um, by the way, they did that for corrosion resistance. Is that what they did it for? <laughs> what's okay. CV? That's that's your that's that's your... a small PVC pipe, not even the big one. That's yeah, the that's little the one tiny. For, that's that's yellow. for potable. That's for water. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's corrosion resistant. Yeah, exactly. It would never corrode. And watch this. I think these instructions are kind of cool from this the shop Saber, N A C S I company. Go to the uh, big. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So here is Shop Saber N A C S I company, and here's the setup instructions CNC controller. See that, Jacob? And here's what they say We are not full of crap. Trust me. Dirt in itself, dirt is not by itself conductive. Many elements come into play and make it conductive enough to be earth ground. The biggest issue is moisture. Once a building is built and the concrete is poured, the ground underneath starts to dry out. As it dries out, it loses conductivity. We have heard, this, and I didn't highlight these things. This is, we have heard of instances where eight to 10 nine ground stakes had to be driven to find a suitable earth. We have heard of people who have had to drill down 80 feet, yes, 80 feet to find a suitable ground. And I'm like, I wonder what a suitable ground would be. Like, how would you know when you got to the point that it was a suitable ground? And that would be an example of a CNC ground, and they have instructions how they want that for a plasma cutter. Now, what are the hazards? There are some, you know, Eric, you said uh, we're trading one problem for another problem, right? And this is one actually we're trading, I don't know, we're a trading. A very small problem for a very large problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're trading, not a good trade. We're trading for a problem is what we're doing. <laughs> okay. okay, here we go. EPRI, Electrical Power Research Institute, and this is a, a, an amazing organization that does a lot of research to try to determine what's really going on out there. And they talked about this elect uh, the auxiliary electrode as it relates to a CNC machine, and it says this, supplemental ground rods, because, Scott, it used to be called the supplemental ground rod at the time the study was done, right. has shown that the rod may actually increase the risk of CNC electronic damage. And they say, the reason we think, we believe it occur, is a rise in the earth ground potential near an electrode causing a large current to flow on the grounding conductor between the electrodes and passing through the CNC machine. I don't know if I have a picture of that. There you go right there. So this is what EPRI is saying, Jacob, that when lightning strikes, you have this rise in voltage between that this actually causes a high failure rate, even though people have a tendency to do that. So it's not a good idea to do that. Okay, I'm done with that one. Let's move to 250.62.